The Square Ball Podcast. Hey, welcome to the show. Brought to you with Levi Solicitors. 10% discount is yours at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Dan Moylan with Michael Normanton and Moscow White as well. Daniel Chapman for Propaganda, the Wolves half of Propaganda, away fans and what is going on in the wider world of football uh, where we will hear uh, what was going out on their fan channels. Are they happy? No, but not in the way they were unhappy in March. Doesn't seem long ago, does it? That are, they, are, they no. dis- are they despondent now? Yeah, it oh, that's good though. It's only the first game of the season. That's great. Yeah, it wasn't as much fun though because last time they were throwing around all conspiracies about how the Premier League were trying to keep them out of Europe because Little Wolves weren't allowed in. All this sort of stuff. I mean, which, they, did, they did well themselves towards the end of the season, didn't they? Because they finished mid-table. Yeah. Well, that was could have also been the Premier League keeping them right really safely out of Europe, like a good eight or nine points out of it. I think they were in the end. But yeah, just a bit sad this time around. It mainly centres around the lack of investment in the squad I mean you did you did notice their bench had like a lot of kids and some centre backs on well those uh, idiots who were taking selfies of themselves um, without asking me to sign a model release were tweeting constantly about a model release yeah well I didn't consent to be in that picture um, <laughs> they were um, uh, like you're talking as if you've been like had creep shots taken of you yeah. <laughs> walking down the street <laughs> Just because they want to take stupid photos of themselves doesn't mean I want a stupid photo of me. They haven't been upskirting you, Moscow. It, you know. should, did you say they should have blurred your face? It might have been. I mean, I didn't want to be associated with that picture, <laughs> put it that way. Anyway, um, we're getting uh, They way were going on and on and on about the there being nothing on the bench for uh, Wolves, apart from Connor Cody, who they've since mm. uh, got rid of to Everton. So I think it must be dawning on the Wolves fans that it's not a Premier League conspiracy it's their Chinese owners who got them this far um, just lost interest now they've got the they've got the esports team they've got the fashion brand they've got everything that they need out of uh, the the WWFC brand that they could possibly get is that the Pandas? no that's WWF this has got C on the end right I think it might be their football club or something this is uh, yeah. no, this is the Wolf the old Team Panda Wolf Eats Panda um what, a, what, have our new, loop, what have our loop pie cousins, cousins been saying anyway? Let's find out, shall we? Yeah. Well, Mr. Miami, Mr. Miami was the most enthusiastic Wolves fan in the world last year. I was going to say this is good because people like Mr. Miami. They know of him now. This is like Springsteen coming on stage and doing Dancing in the Dark straight away, <laughs> isn't it? Playing Mr. Miami first. But even him. Mm. Not bothered. Are we going to blather on about tapes again in this one? Or shall I just, no, play, just, play. just play the clips? You excited for new season? Yeah, I'm excited for the new season, but I would say that you know, a lot of the fans from Wolves that was negative kind of ruined it for me. I can't lie to you. Uh, sometimes the negativity outshines the positivity. Kind of fucked me up. Oh, man. They fucked him up. They fucked up Mr. Miami's positivity. What's you know, the point? You know, that's wrong. I mean, this is a man who can go into Greg's and be absolutely thrilled with the product. I mean, Greg's is fine, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, like, I, I, you wouldn't normally go in and be like, what's your, what's your go to thing in Buzzing Greg's? about it. Bacon sandwich and coffee would be pretty much what I would. What if you're later in the day you don't fancy bacon sandwich and coffee? Um, they used to do a chicken katsu thing that was good. Bake wasn't it? Bake. Bake. Yeah, was everything's nice. become a bake. It's not a pasty anymore. Mm. I mean, we were referencing on, on the other show, uh, the other half of propaganda about how we've got a lot of new American viewers and listeners now. Mm. Hi, um, Greg's. Whenever people come over from the states, they love Greg's, don't they? It's cheap. Yeah. I mean, that you know, a man for the. Yeah, cheap. For, for it's a cheap, cheap option. Widely available baked goods. There's like ten of them on every high street. So there used to be two in Pontefract mm. across the road from each other. I never quite understood why they shut one down. Quite it's like petrol stations, isn't it? You don't want to, if you're heading in one direction, you don't want to be crossing a road to go get your past idea. It was a pedestrianised street. Oh. So I mean, who knows? Who knows what was going on there? But yeah, anyway, Mister Miami. Yeah, he was, he was he was a fan of Greg's, but he's just killed his buzz now. Have they? That's yeah, it. Oh. I mean, Greg's haven't. He still likes them. Oh, but yeah, you can you can watch his yeah, other no stuff. Negativity around Greg's online is not like you get from Wolves fans. Mm. Is, is is Greg's a bit gauche for you, Moscow? Or do you no, are you a fan? Fine. What, I what mean, it's a long time since I've been to a Greg's just because I don't. Uh, do you call it Gregory's? I don't work <laughs> in an office anymore. But I used to do. Um, was it there that I used to get a, like a cheese and bacon twist? Yeah, they do. That's mm. that's a good yeah. Yeah, those used. I could have been Coupland's maybe. But you've kind of because you mentioned the American stuff, it sent my mind into. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts land and I can still taste even though it's probably been 15 years the um, ham and egg bagel from uh, Dunkin' Donuts that I didn't eat until it was cold 
That was beautiful. I can still taste it. God. Take anyway. Me back. Take me back. Talking wolves. And this is where the majority of the lunacy came from last time. I think this lad was, was one of them. But they're not complaining about referees. They're not complaining about anything. He had a nice rug over the back of his chair, like mm. a sheepskin fluffy thing. That was nice. Not like a bus driver. And an aircon unit you could see in the back as well. The lucky bastard. Is it his car? No, he's in a he's in a house. He's got oh. like um he's got a it's like a tumble dryer style hose popping out of his window. Excellent. Proper aircon unit. Do you think all wolves fans get sheepskin rugs as part of like the the thing? Because that's what a wolf does, it, doesn't it? It's it, true. It makes rugs. It's, it's true. Sheep's sheep's clothing. But yeah, he was he started off making the same the same point about the lack <laughs> of we, squad depth and investment. Did you find any wolves uh YouTube channels where they dress up as sheep? <laughs> because <laughs> none of them have ever done that. Then they need to start. Mm. I would, I would watch. <laughs> they should sit a in home wolves it. podcast called Wolves in Sheep's Clothing, where they just dress as sheep and, and discuss the, and... the football. No, they just they just discuss okay. the football and don't ever refer to the fact that they what, are sit in the home end and style it out. Yeah, I mean they could do that as well. <laughs> every every away game, every away game they have, they go and sit in the home end dressed as a sheep. <laughs> they need uh, the um, the fire certificates for the. Uh, the, the cloudy clothes, wouldn't they? Yes, like, uh, a, like taking a flag in. Do you think yeah. it stop people from being dressed as a sheep? Uh, right, talking wolves. So anyway, he was blaming the <laughs> he was blaming the board essentially. Not enough depth. Um, didn't want to blame any of the players. They were like lambs to the slaughter at Elland Road. Excellent. I don't blame any of the players today. I mean, some of them had pretty poor standard games. Like Jose Sar was not great. Johnny was not great. Aidnori was certainly not great. Donka, don't really know what he offered to today either, but we've got no other option. So that's just the way it is at the moment. I mean, I, there's there's nothing. I can't blame the players All because those there isn't. There's no blame on the manager because what else can they do? Not going to blame the players <laughs> apart from the four I did name. Yeah, which is what forty percent of the outfield team. Mm. Apart from them, but yes. apart from them, right? And it's not it's not the managers. No, it's no one's fault. No, no one's, one's, no one's to blame. It's the owners, the owners have turned off the tap. This is it. Wolves were happy when they were just spending millions in the championship uh, less than they should have done to get the players of the quality they did out of Mendes. And now they're in the Premier League and it's not the same because they're just not getting loads of really good players anymore. So um, they're all dead upset. And it's a new stadium coming. Is all this going to, is anything going to happen? They still have, um, I suppose they haven't had uh, a home game yet. That would be a real sign of Wolves on the decline if they don't have the pre-match DJ and light show at Molyneux anymore this season. I think that's when you know that club is in trouble. Connor Cody going, if they sell Neves before the transfer window closes, whatever. But if there's not a DJ doing a half-hour set on the pitch before the, every game and a light show, then I think that's a real sign that you, mm. your club's in difficulty. See, you see the DJ in my brain there is thinking, how many different Wolf songs have, are there out there? Like, I think Shakira did like She Wolf. Mm -hmm. You got obviously Cry Wolf by Aha. Hungry Like the Wolf. Hungry Like the Wolf. Was, was that Duran Duran? Duran Duran. Yeah. Mm. Any more? <laughs> not for now. <laughs> you can talk among yourselves. I'm going to come back with more. Um, should we hear some more clips from, um, from Talking Wolf? Yeah, I mean, he was the only person who actually spoke about Leeds as well because mainly it was just all a bit. Yeah, but you know, a bit selfish, really, just talking about their own yeah. team. What, what's the, we've got a show to do here. Give yeah, us we're, some... we're discussing Wolves in, in considerable depth. No, what yeah. do we get well, some from them about Leeds? What is happening with Connor Cody? Because he seems to be going on loan to Everton for not really any money. Um, so they used to play three at the back. But why are they just throw, throwing him in the bin? Why don't they sell him for more? Well, for some, well, he it is going to be a, a deal at the end of the season, apparently. Mm. But for like nine million or something. You'd think he'd be worth more money than that. Mm. Um, Unless they've done international a, loud mouth. a medical on his weak skull. True. Well, well yeah, he's, he's still going to be doing that at um, Everton. And he's from Liverpool as well, isn't he? So he's, you know, he's going home and all that. My big worry is that he might make Everton half decent. Mm. If I've actually got a good player, that's not good. Songs good containing song. the word wolf. Uh, the Clyde Valley Stompers, 1962. Reached number 25 in the charts. No. Peter and the Wolf, it was called. Mm. And then we covered all the other ones. Duran Duran, Hungry Like the Wolf. Yeah. Aha, Cry Wolf. And then Shakira, She Wolf. What about Who's Afraid of the Big Bad? Uh, not in there. Didn't chart. If it's, oh, okay. if it's made I'll, I'll have a look for Wolves. Hang on a minute. <laughs> contains the word. So I don't understand wolves. why changing from oh. three at the back to four at the back necessitates throwing your best player in the bin. It doesn't necessarily mm. seem, but they seem very... Happy that Max Kilman is a, a rising star and the sign Nathan Collins from Burnley because getting relegated is obviously the sign of a great defender. Uh, position number 23 in the charts, October 2010, Wombats, a 
song called Tokyo, open brackets, vampires and wolves, close brackets. Mm. There you go. Good. I mean, I don't know if adding vampires to the model new mix is necessarily a, a positive thing. Five songs just on loop. Let's hear from Talking Wolves. Leeds, they played well. They showed some fight, to be fair. I'll give them some credit. They were all right today. Um, they they had to hold on through our good spell, but they were actually played some pretty nice, direct, expansive football at times. So, uh, And a few of their new signings actually look like pretty decent players, like Brendan Aronson actually looks like he's, he's pretty decent. And it's nice for them to have Bamford back, obviously. Well, thank you, well-spoken gentlemen. So gritted teeth. I mean, I... Because I know how much other teams' fans hate Bamford, I'm, I find it very difficult not to hear something snide about that one. It's like, oh, and obviously it's Good nice for you. It's nice for those scumbags to have their their chief scummer back, so they can have a horrible, hateful time together. It reminded me a little bit of. Um, I've noticed Jesse Marsh keeps calling us quite good. He keeps saying like his click came on. He was quite good. I think he means it in a very positive way, but of the in English English it sounds um it doesn't sound as impressive as he wants to. There's like this level of I'm trying to I'm That's trying right. to I love how you're trying to dig out a criticism of Jesse Marsh about no, being, it's not it, being dis- disingenuous by saying someone's quite good and not meaning it. No, it's just it's inter- I'm trying I'm still trying to calibrate like if you go through I think he's quite good is like six, seven out of ten. And so it's just getting used to that but he keeps bringing that up it's like yeah I think that was quite good whereas I would have said it was very good it's like he's he kind of is he trying to underrating deli- things is he trying to deliberately tone it down because we think of Americans as being a bit yeah and I'm still picking on him anyway, on him anyway. I'm not picking on it it's <laughs> just, I didn't it's, like uh, him when he was enthusiastic and I don't like him raining it in. it's like his um, <laughs> it's a bit like his sort of bueno it's like yeah it's, it's quite good mm. it's it's interesting trying to get these uh, I really want to know what he said to um, Large though because I don't think he said oh I think that dive was quite good I think it's something more forceful. So, so who's bloke two then, Michael? Um, this was one of the angry ones last time. He was really, he was really yelling, and he's got a more of a, a traditional Wolverhampton accent. This time, I think he was re- re- recording this on a coach. I mean, I've put a little clip of it in just so you can hear how terrible it is. Also, really disturbing is the angle. I've put a screenshot on our prep sheet so you can see it. Oh, yeah. I feel like he's. I feel like I'm zipped into a bag, and he's just he's just he's just allowing me to peep out from the suitcase. And they'll find your body in several and, weeks in a bath. And he's talking to me to just check I'm still alive. <laughs> it's a it's a it really does, it does look like I think that, it's because yeah. he's got it framed with a bit of bus seat in the top, and he's a thumb round the edge or something. Yeah. But it, and he's looking down. You keep quiet. He's you really keep quiet. He's really looking down on the camera. I think he puts he, the lotion in the basket. <laughs> so I don't know if he's doing it. To, to try and hide some of the radio noise that's going on around him, but it hasn't well, worked has anyway. Because it sounds like this. It puts the lotion in the basket. At that point, the lads were knackered. Could not fault the effort from the boys today. Thought they ran and they ran and they ran. Effort didn't win your games. Goals win your games. And so we couldn't. I was listening to the radio. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a website called you are listening dot two, and it gives you um, it's a mixer, so there's um, a random uh, bit of ambient music from the ambient tag on SoundCloud mixed with, and then you can mix it with like so it's come up with the LAPD uh, South Bureau um, broadcast, but you can have number stations, you can do uh, um, air traffic control. And it creates this kind of ambient soundscape so you can uh, mix your own. It's like that, only a Wolves fan. <laughs> and I noticed that like, you put a screenshot of him uh, staring into the bag and it's got the timer on there. It's 20, 21 minutes. Is the whole thing like that? No, it's a, it's, um, a compilation. So the, like, the rug boy was okay, on there as well. He was, but he was a good five minutes, I'd think, say, of him, uh, of him with Radio 5. <laughs> Playing away in the background because it's it, that is quite an intense listening experience. <laughs> We've got these headphones on as well that are, are very good, and it really brought out the <laughs> the base of the. I think I could hear the air conditioning of the of the uh, or the, the the engine noise of the bus that he's on. So that it and might then, be the breathing of the person who's holding the phone in the bank, <laughs> and then him <laughs> and him talking about the football, and then the radio louder than him, and trying to tune it all in. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I find myself craning my neck to try and listen harder, and I realise I can't. I can just turn the volume up over there, but even then, it quite, still doesn't work. Quite tempted to press that to like 180 gram vinyl and do a limited edition um, <laughs> run to send out to like the ambient noise crew in the world. Always Wolves TV. 
Fan TV, sorry. It was Dazzling Dave. It's still Dazzling Dave in brackets. But has he moved into... Just, has he, he's expanded? I think he's tried to take it away from being about him. Bless him. I think he's I think he's probably quite a nice a nice fellow, is, is Dazzling Dave. But some people ruining his video, and this is, uh, and this is what it sounded like. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to probably give my man of the match to Neves. I'll give the performance to seven, because it wasn't too bad overall. We played with a lot of quality uh, in the second half. The Leeds fans are obviously happy. Fair play to them. They've won the game, but you've got to learn to win with a little bit of dignity, guys. <laughs> I know that Leeds fans didn't win a lot last season, and they, they stayed up at the end of the season. Um, but you've got to learn to win with a bit of dignity, and, uh, you know... I thought better some of the fans a lot of the fans were pretty good but those guys that have just come over there are really disappointing from their point of view but enjoy it whilst it lasts <laughs> you don't have the oh, right well. you don't have the right to do your broadcast from in the car park Ellen right no, he's, he's yeah. doing it by the South Stand ticket office the old <laughs> You know the old club shop one, that yeah. one there. Win with a bit of dignity. I love that. Yeah, well, with, why would you win with a bit of dignity? With all with all respect to any uh, fan channels out there, it's probably lower down the chain of dignity is standing outside the ticket office with a <laughs> selfie stick, um, <laughs> trying to talk about the match that you've just been watching and expecting. So I love that as well. That that line about uh, this is very disappointing from their point of view and <laughs> nobody in the background of that sounded disappointed from no. their point of view in the slightest i think from their point of view they were just um l laughing they're having a jolly nice time weren't they, <laughs> they sounded i think i know what i would rather have been doing in that situation <laughs> i mean and trying to appeal to <laughs> drunk men who've just won a football match be like come on now no no come on think about how you win think about the fan channels hey, lads i'm trying to vlog here yeah <laughs> <laughs> Think about the vloggers. Win with a bit of dignity. Bless him. We mentioned it the next day as well. He was like, I mean, they did spoil it. And that did. That did. That was a bit unfortunate. Probably, it's but... probably taken the, the shine off the victory for them. <laughs> <laughs> when they're, I'm yeah, sure from they're... their point of view, I'm sure they've woken up this morning yeah. reflecting on that. And Head thinking... full of regrets. <laughs> uh, right, finish. <laughs> and not desperately trying to find it on YouTube so that they can laugh at it again. Yeah, yeah. Express and Star did do some videos, the, uh, the Moscow. Am I in the background? Cap Capturers. Well, no, but they did, I think, get Mateus Click in the background. I think it's him. It does look like him. If it's not, it's a very good. It's a very decent look alike anyway. But um, not the not the the best thing for a podcast. This visual. Uh, no, on, no, the, on the video not. version, we can. Get oh, this, we can do that. Look at that. Get it on there. Yeah. Oh, let's yeah, forget but, we're on the telly now as well. But Finner was, was there Finner's. for some reason. He'd done. A, he was staying in Manchester for this game. Okay. In Leeds, which seemed an odd choice, but uh, he was there with his Liverpool supporting girlfriend, and he was doing a bit of in stadium vloggy stuff. So this is. From the Wolves' end, the Melier save at the, just just before half time. Good ball, good ball. Yes, yes. How have you missed? Get him off! Get him off! Oh no! Oh, isn't that's, it nice? That's, that's general upset you can hear in the yeah, background. Yeah, just feeding off disappointment. It's two minutes before half time as well, isn't it? Get him off! Get him off! Bitch. Get him off! It's a great save. Hey, now. I don't know what else. Maybe he should have scored, but it's... Um, Melier's read it really well. Mm. To save with his foot as well, it's... Um, it's a special spidery leg trick as well as this, because a lot of keepers would spread themselves and lay, leave themselves open for the nutmeg, but his legs are that long. He can like articulate them inwards to stop the, the through the <laughs> legs one, but then there's enough leg at the side... Yeah. To still create like a, a draft excluder, a good leg, either edge. leg spread. He did quite well, didn't he? He did quite he did, well. He did quite well. Uh, Mrs. Finners, then let's hear her take on Leeds. Okay, so Leeds away, done. Thoughts? The kit was boring and the stadium was too far away from the train station. That's it. Loose, 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 loose. I, mean, I quite like the kit. We, we like playing home kits. Fair, fair point about the, the railway station. It wasn't clear if it was their kit or our kit that was boring. I think uh, she must have been talking about Leeds. Probably she was asked about thoughts on Leeds. Well, if they get mm. the um, if they get the Holbeck viaduct sorted out, you'll be able to mm. walk on a beautiful green leafy direct from the station mm. to um, Lowfields Road. It's path. not that far if you twenty minutes. Isn't yeah, it? if you're young and fit, and they sound like in they both look like shape. they both look like they should have been able to. Yeah, to you walked ninety two so. miles, didn't you? Exactly, and I'm in, and I'm in really <laughs> the good prime shape. prime of life. <laughs> so it's um, there's good shape and there's good shape. <laughs> it's not a, it's not a difficult <laughs> journey. Wolves kit actually, I think they're quite a nice one last year. I didn't like their kit this year. So. Castori though, isn't it awful? Yeah, awful they're not putting brand. a lot of effort into those. There's so. um, there's a I can't remember the name of the the Twitter handle, but it's like um, bad Castori or something like that, and it shows all the shit merchandise that they churn out, which is really eye bleedingly, mm. eye wateringly expensive, isn't it? The stuff they do. It was a Newcastle hoodie with the Castori logo that had been. Uh, is it Castor Castori? Whatever. Don't Whatever. care. 
and the logo is just massively off to one side. I mean, you know, we, we know from having done our own merch that sometimes printing can go slightly skewed one way or another, but we're talking, it's almost like a 45 degree angle and they're probably charging a hundred pounds for that. I hope we never have them. I know, you know, people don't like everything that Adidas do, annoyed by the supply chain issues. Let's never go to Castori. But you've been, you've taken Kine's, Kine's money there, haven't you, to say good things about Adidas? <laughs> well, I've drunk the Kool-Aid. How dare you? How dare you? Into the other half of this now then, that dispenses with uh, with Wolverhampton Wanderers. What else is happening in the wider world of propaganda and football, please? Michael, who are we starting with? Um, Steve Nichol. Oh, brilliant. It's nice to have Stevie back. Straight in for him. He's. Uh, I think when we first started this, he was one of the very first people we used, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For, yeah. Former Liverpool defender, and he now works for ESPN doing their football coverage in the United States. A very, very dour man. He's very fond of crisps. Um, mm-hmm. In his player profile, it was discovered that he once ate, he always used to eat a six pack back to back as one of his favourite snacks, mm. really loading up on those carbs and that salt. It's nice to see he's, he's continued that as well because ESPN tweeted a photo of him in his uh, back in the studio with just loads of packets of crisps open. So enjoy Steve Nichol while you can. <laughs> I think the most impressive thing about Aronson was not that. He was all over the park and he was closing the ball and he was winning it and he was giving it. We know that he can do all that stuff. I think I think the best part of his game was the fact that it was the way he delivered these passes. Right. And and the decision making. Not just with the ball at his feet, but again, choosing when to go and close down and choosing when to stay off. You know, you talk about almost a complete performance, because obviously scoring would have been would have been yeah. the the cherry on the top. He did, did score. Well. <laughs> <laughs> it was a given the own goal. Uh, Frank- he didn't score. Eh? All right. Come on. All right, okay, all right, okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> They've got to mollify him now, haven't they? Just, all right, Steve, don't go. Because remember, he did once famously set fire to the hair of uh, one of his uh, Gary teammate, Ablett's wife. teammates' wives, yeah. Yeah. For reasons that are not entirely clear, it wasn't. Because, I don't think she was disputing a a, a goal scorer <laughs> at that point. But yeah. I, so it is unfair that that goal got taken off of uh, Brendan. He was very good, and um, it's reminded me that when he talks about his um, choice of passing and stuff, the one I really liked. It didn't really. It maybe wasn't the best pass in the end, but I liked watching him do it when we broke through the middle. It was when somebody passed it just behind Aronson. And he collected it on the run. He still took that. So that was great. Sprints through the middle. And then as the play was developing, you could see Jackie trying to make this overlapping run. And Aronson just let the gap open up. And it did. And then played the pass through. And the pass was really good. And it turned out, I just think Wolves did a good job of then um, blocking Harrison from going any further. So it didn't work out. But watching it, you could see Aronson was kind of, you knew what he was waiting for and waiting for that just to become apparent so he could choose the moment to put it through. And it was like, yeah, he looks like a good player. His brother scored at the weekend as well. That was Paxton, nice. yes. Paxton. We should sign him. With an E. Um, was Rusty there to watch? Uh, no, because it was a way to FC Cincinnati. Is that a long way? <sighs> Probably. They Probably. lost as well. It was He it, it came on as a sub near the end of a, uh, it was 3-0. In a couple of minutes, he made it 3-1. Probably, actually, more of an own goal than Brendan's because he hit it from the edge of the penalty area, hit somebody's toe, and then loops over the goalkeeper and in. So the pair of them should have them both taken off. Either either they both scored or neither of them scored. I think there needs to be a, a transatlantic ruling on this kind of thing. One, but one or the other. A good weekend for the Aronsons. Good weekend for anybody who thinks Manchester United are... A laughing stock now. Isn't it great just to witness their their decline? <laughs> After all the shit. I mean, for the benefit of anybody who is younger, maybe doesn't appreciate what the shite we had to endure. After us winning the title in 1992, it was basically a 10 or 15 year shit fest. It was, they, was it longer than that? They won everything, didn't they? It, it went on forever, mm. yeah. My entire school life basically was dominated by pretend scum fans who never once been to a game being smug because they'd won the league again. And it's great because the risk this summer was that maybe Eric Ten Hag could bring some competence. Mm. But nope, <laughs> no signs of it so far. This is this is one game in. They've played the same, if in case you're confused by these clips, they've played the same number of games 
as us, which is one. Mm-hmm. They've got a new. How did, ma- they, how did they get on? They've got a new manager. Well, they lost two one to Brighton, but they lost four nil against Brighton at the end of last. So season. So they're improving. They are improving. So it's a good result. Yeah, in well, many it's ways, it's an improvement. But then they've never lost at home to Brighton in their entire history before. So that's good. That's a good one for the record. They box. managed to get on the score sheet as well, so that's something to build on for them, isn't it? They did indeed. But yeah, this is a, this is very very mank. So do we need to put? Mm. Some, is there a, you know, yeah. we've got to put explicit tags on these. It's one of the if, most mank people we've ever featured. We have to put explicit tags on the podcast in case they're swearing. You know, for sensitive mm. ears. Is there a mank tag we we need to maybe? We're, ask? Just, we're just telling you. Skip forward yeah. about about a minute if you don't want to hear it. Clueless, pointless. They're looking at each other. Urgency. <laughs> Requirement. This is supposed to be a new dawn. They always say it's darkest before the dawn, but this is dark. This is this, <laughs> this is going to get a lot more worse. I'm telling you, before it gets well, before it gets better. And, and this, honestly, an example needs to be made of one of these players. <laughs> Somebody needs to be turfed out before maybe end of August. I don't care who it is. Maybe January. I don't care. I don't care who it is. Big names, big reputations. I don't care. I want to see. I rather. I want to see fight, desire. It was nothing there, mate. It's it lackluster. Is he suggesting they sacrifice a player to the gods or something? <laughs> it don't matter, don't matter who. <laughs> just, just sent away. You're, you're too lackluster. Lackluster. <laughs> it's three separate words, isn't it? Lackluster. <laughs> no desire. <laughs> I like it when you go, Mank. Uh, yeah, I dark. Should, say, should say, by the way, the... Um, dark. It was supposed to be dark. You know the, dark. You know, you know the 92-mile walk that and we... No urgency. <laughs> the 92 I mile. love urgency. Urgency is a great... Uh, you, if you're listening, you're trying to work out where somebody's from. Wait until they say, urgency. <laughs> Try and turn the conversation around that way and you'll soon know that, um, uh, yeah. I was just saying, Moscow, like, you know the 92-mile walk we did? There's still a WhatsApp group, 100 strong people in it of um just keeping in touch with everybody looking out for everybody you know huge sense of camaraderie built up in there we, we've gotten to more footballing matters more recently rather than the walk itself and just about everybody agreed in that group that whenever they see um and i can't even do it myself now i was gonna say cancelo playing for man city consuelo. It's, yeah exactly <laughs> everybody sees consuelo, consuelo. And, he, and hears it in your stupid mank voice there's no urgency from consuelo um, he's lackluster <laughs> should we move on to the next clip yeah, go on. Webby and O'Neill. Yeah, so we're not done with this. This is O'Neill, not Webby. Right. Who has had his say separately, but again, similar theme on this one, more or less. <laughs> Put it all in the fucking bin. <laughs> and I believe that these kids there, these people there who were going to perform, that crowd was absolutely head down, depressed. Well, you're not going to get depressed when you see hungry young players I'd rather have them on and get beat, yeah. right? But they'd give you a game over the 90 minutes. There was no game there. Even look at United's goal. It was garbage, yeah. right? Yes, the crowd got <laughs> up behind it. But I didn't, goal. I didn't see wave after wave of United putting balls in there and their goalkeeper saving it. Yeah. It was absolutely dross football. Uh, it's it's put Eddie in charge and play the kids, isn't They're it? They're at that stage one game in. They wanted to drag people outside the stadium and like boot them to death. I mean, chuck them in a canal or something. I mean, I know, I know we're laughing at this, like, because we we didn't know what to expect going into the Wolves game, did we? It felt like nothing was off the table at that point. Now we've got some data to kind of inform our opinion. We think, oh, we're probably going to be all right. You know, it's too early to call, but early signs are good. They've kind of had the same thing. They were desperately going into this season, hoping, hoping beyond hope. Ten Hag, new manager's going to fix it. Get get a tune out of these players. We'll add some new players. And they've just completely gone off in the other direction compared and, to where we are. And they really can't sign players either. No. They're now trying to get like an aging Arnautovic out of Syria as a, as an option for him, which is just uh, Rabio from Juventus, which is just asking for trouble. And they, they've made themselves such a problem. Like I was looking at uh, McTominay. Who? <laughs> McTominay. McTominay. Scott McTominay. McFred. McFred. I, I guess the pair of them, because if you think they're now talking about. McTominay has to be kept because he's an experienced player. <laughs> but so, and I'm trying to work out what kind of wage McTominay must. Be I will on. say they do not want them to kept. But no, but who are you going to sell Scott McTominay to? Mm. Because nobody would want to sign that player because he's awful. This is going to be really embarrassing when we sign him. Yeah, but he must be. Well, no, because I imagine he's probably earning more than our highest paid player. Mm. I would not be surprised, and that's why they can't. There is no chance of them ever moving McFred 
anywhere. So they have to just play them game after game after game, and it's brilliant. And then talk about oh, well, there'll be some hungry young kids. The last, uh, the last result of um, Man United's thought, under twenty three. I, I thought Marcus Rashford was trying to fix that. The hungry young kids. <laughs> Uh, well, he's uh, has he not succeeded? Well, they must be too well fed because they lost three one to Liverpool in the last game of last season, one one with Arsenal. So they were mid table in the uh, the division that, admittedly, we got <clears throat> relegated from. But I don't even I think that's probably because I cannot imagine under any circumstances looking at the state of their first team that anybody uh, Carrington <laughs> has been like, oh, but no, it's okay because the youth team and the academy is being run brilliantly. Maybe they keep asking Alex Ferguson about that so it'll be fine but I just don't I cannot imagine that there is like a a really good well even they brought in um, it was uh, was it who was the kid that they brought on at the end of last season and he was fucking garbage was he the one who cost him about 10 million who played against us with the big hair yeah they brought some player on in a, in a match when is um, his name like Hulk or something daft like I that I think wasn't it um, Silence of the Lambs wasn't it wasn't it more that What's that called? Hannibal. Wasn't he called Hannibal? Yes, Hannibal. Something yes, like that. So, yeah. yes, Hannibal. Um, That's twice we've referred to Silence of the Lambs today in both halves of propaganda. And they just, he, he wasn't good either. Um, they good. started just experimenting by did, giving did these you, kids um, a game and yeah, they were rubbish. Did you watch their game at all? Just the highlights. No. I, I had it on and uh, so I didn't actually watch it all because I was busy doing other stuff at the time but I had it on in the background but somebody picked up on Twitter like, like Sir Alex, Sir Alex watch uh, yeah, how quickly the camera so it showed Ten Hag, then immediately cut to him in the um, in the director's box, and he's just there stalking the halls like yep. a ghoul. He goes, to, I mean, as, as much as we've been sad that Bielsa has left and may never return, it's kind of better than having to see him sat in the West Stand just looking at things go with the notepad, kind of. Mm. Yeah, mm. it's a, it's a clean break. It's like staying friends on Facebook if you've broken up. Mm. Get no, rid. Just you block everybody. You're never going to speak again, and if you do, it won't be for good reasons. No, don't do it. Yeah. Just block everybody. Anyway, um, they're unhappy, and that's good. That makes us happy. What else have we got? Well, we'll just finish on a more, uh, someone slightly more unhinged. The the casual fan is goes by the name of on YouTube. He's the Canadian boy who gets very upset. Moose toucher. So we'll let, well, let's see if if the the break over summer has calmed him down. This is Brighton going two up. I, I think is it has it. Mm. <laughs> Here come Brighton again. March is one. We've won with Shaw. Good save from the hair. Down 2-0. I wanna fucking kill you! Definitely not winning anymore. Why are we sitting so far back, man? Shaw, you're so fucking bad, man. I hate you. Why is Malasia not playing? I hate defenders who do that. Oh, back up, back up, back up, back up. How about make the fucking tackle? Don't just wait for him to shoot, you fucking cheeseburger douchebag. Holy fuck. I thought the Canadians, um, the old moose touchers, were supposed to be a little bit more calm compared to the their cousins south of the border there. Seems not. I mean, that is somebody for whom you really, it's probably a dangerous thing to say, but it's only a game. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know if David De Gea actually needs putting to death. I mean, that said, there are moments when I'm thoroughly ashamed of my behaviour during games. You know, like the things, mm-hmm. the things that enter my mind and often leave my mouth. It's a good job that everybody around you is normally shouting at the same time because yeah, it can get lost in a, in yeah, a mix, can't it? Yeah, and and I'm, I'm just it, it stops me getting angry in other other parts of my life. I let it all vent out there at Ellen Road on a Saturday, but still. Interestingly, for our uh, Canadian friend, there are no Google results for the phrase "cheeseburger douchebag." There is one result, one singular result on Google, and it's from. Uh, a TV program called Street Outlaws, but it's somebody saying, "Go eat a fucking cheeseburger, comma douchebag." That's a Google whack, isn't it? Yeah, there is no incidence anywhere that I can see with like a one-second Google search of anybody calling anybody a cheeseburger douchebag <laughs> in uh, the internet's record of history. We've just upped the output on that front, then many times over compared to what was out there before. Yeah, I'm glad we could um, amplify this real positive contribution to uh It's only to negative world. towards scum. What were you going to say, Michael, anyway? You, I... Oh, I think the cheeseburger thing, I think it's a reference to Luke Shaw being fat, is what I would guess. And douchebag? Well, douchebag's a generic insult, isn't it? But it's like calling him a fat douchebag. But I think he's saying, go eat some cheeseburgers. Cheeseburger douchebag. You douchebag. It mean, isn't it? 
Well, no, mm-hmm. no, because that's that's the example I found. Go eat a cheeseburger, comma, douchebag. There's no comma there. This mm-hmm. is, it's a noun. It was a you cheeseburger. compound noun, yeah. cheeseburger, douchebag. Uh, should we listen to more Exceptional. Of anyway. He's a true original. Yeah, let's see what else he's got. Ronaldo's onside. He did time his run perfectly. Rashford's in! <gasps> oh, puke, Rashford, you piece of shit! <laughs> yeah, piece of shit is a bit more, um, a bit more generic, isn't it? I've never shouted, oh, puke. Oh, someone before though. That's uh You make puke. That was it. El- 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 mm. Chilino. No, it was um, it was. Ed- I think it was Eduardo. It was one of the the, the lads defending her honor, wasn't it? Not even that. No, he was attacking Mike Farnan's daughter on Instagram because you remember we had the battle of the daughters. Mm. Ah, yes. Um, just because their dads wanted to buy football clubs, and so <laughs> yeah, it was um either Eduardo or the other one, the one who got Urco- his uh, Urco. Urco. So it was Eduardo went on uh, her Instagram and she put a selfie up and just went, you make puke. There we go. Nice point to finish on. Uh, <laughs> Happy days. Yeah. <laughs> if only he'd have had uh, the wherewithal to call her a cheeseburger douchebag. History could have been so different. Feels like we've had a, a class in linguistics mm. today. It's been it's been educational. We've, um, we've learned that it gets dark before the dawn. Going to get darker <laughs> before it gets better. Because it's so like what's dark. More propaganda from uh, from Southampton after that game. I won't be here for that on the holidays, um, so enjoy that. I'm sad to be missing out. I genuinely enjoy listening to the opposition fan channels. Southampton were quite... I think they've always been quite tame, haven't they, in the past, Southampton? It's, it's, it's quite nice in Hampshire, isn't it, generally speaking? It's all right yeah, down yeah. there. They're all just waiting for the Titanic to come back. Mm. Any sign of it? Not so far. That's Not why they're all still there. Yeah. Um, and propaganda extra. We're going to do some more bonus bits now, then. Um, cherries on icings. Um as we heard in one of the clips there. Uh, that's propaganda extra for the TSB Plus members. Flip over to that. Look out for that in your feed. Otherwise, we will return with... What are we doing next? We've got the weekly show to come as well, haven't we? That's exciting. Mm. It's a busy week. It is a busy week. We'll speak to you in a bit. The Square Ball Podcast. 